Well, let's go to this one. No, I want to go to this one. Where is this one? This one. This one. This one. Let's go to this one first. Since Rand Paul got in trouble this last week for plagiarizing, I felt like I had to make a disclaimer. Uh, I am guilty of the same crime. Uh, all of my sermons are stolen. They're not in sermon form when I steal them. Uh, but the thoughts, some of the words, a lot of the words, uh, th all of the thoughts, anything good, all right? I'll give them anything good. I steal, okay? Uh, the, my Ephesian sermons are stolen from Mr. Peter O'Brien uh, in, a, in a book uh, in the Pillar Commentary, New Testament Commentary. You can check it out at the Grace Library. As next semester, okay. Uh, anyway, I just wanted you to know that because uh, 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 he got in trouble for doing that. And, uh, you know, and, and, and my crime goes way back in time, too, because, like, Chronicles I stole from Martin Selman. Um, hmm. <laughs> Ezekiel? <laughs> you can't blame me for that one. I, he wanted to know who we should blame for Ezekiel. I inflicted Ezekiel on these folks for, what, a year and a half, I think. Uh, every chapter, and went through the whole thing. I, I've probably given my deal away here. Um, I, I, uh, no, I don't know. <laughs> anyway... Um, have you ever picked up one of those, one of those books of scenery? Uh, I have a friend who, who takes uh, uh, photographs of scenery. He's, he's got stuff in National Geographic and all kinds of places. His name is John McMurray, and, he, and he's just a tremendous photographer. And um, you open one of these books, and, and you're looking at it and going, oh, this is just phenomenal. This is a marvelous picture. You know, it just, it's just great. This is, the, this is the Grand Tetons and, and you know, beautiful lake there and, and uh, reflections and all kinds of things going on. And then you notice that there is a fold-out. There is a whole other page that, that you've never noticed. And you open it up, and it, it, it expands the picture. It expands the scene beyond anything that you, you thought was there before. This is what... Paul is telling us about Jesus, that he is there to give us more than we could ever think, ever imagine in our lives, um, to help us in ways that, that we wouldn't even think about asking, uh, that we wouldn't even think about imagining. And yet God unfolds this before us, uh, and we see some of the things that he's going to give, be giving to us, that he has given to us. Uh, here in e Ephesians chapter 3. But he wants to give us even more than that. And he wants us to pay attention to all the picture and all the gifts that he has. All right. The opening words of verse 14, uh, for this reason, uh, take up the, the opening words of verse 1. Uh, Paul started his prayer back in chapter 3, verse 1. And, uh, but then he got sidetracked because he wanted to explain that, that his ministry... Um, uh, was, was the reason why he was praying this, that his prayer was flowing out of his ministry. He wanted them to be part of the, of the church, and they were part of the church, and this is his ministry to make people part of the church, and so now he's praying that they would understand all of that. And so he, has, he went, and, I don't know if it's a digression or if it's just an explanation that he thought he needed to make, um, but now he's back to his prayer again. Uh, here's a servant of the gospel praying that his readers would become the mature Christians that he wants them to be and that they want to be as well. The opening verses introduce the prayer and address God as Father. We can come to our Lord and address him as Father. Is that clock right? I'm sorry, I just looked at the clock. <laughs> Oops. Everybody turn around and look at the clock. <laughs> okay. Whoa. Let's go. <laughs> click, 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 click. <laughs> All right. The passage concludes with a, and the passage concludes with a single sentence doxology. Um, Paul has been preparing.
through the teaching and prayer, preparing us for a lifestyle, preparing us for a lifestyle that he is about to encourage us to participate in, a, prayer, a lifestyle that will need you to be empowered by uh, our Heavenly Father, empowered by the Spirit. Um, that's where he's going today. That's what he wants to do. Uh, he wants us to get there. So let's just look at verse 14. <laughs> How would that be? He starts off with, for this reason. That, and the for this reason is, is, goes way back to his saying that we're part of the temple. Because we're part of the temple, because we're part of, of Christ's body, because we're part of the family, because we're part of the church, for this reason, Paul can pray all of this, uh, the things that he's doing. And I would just like to introduce this prayer, because I didn't realize what time it was. Um, because there are two elements that are really quite unusual. Now, the first one is bowing the knee. Now, that's unusual for Baptists, but the rest of the Christian world does this quite a lot. Uh, and the second one is talking to God as Father. And that's interesting, too. And no other prayers, I don't think, in the New Testament have these two elements. These, this prayer is quite unusual. In, in all kinds of ways. The usual posture for Jewish praying and for early Christian praying was standing up. They would stand up and they would raise their hands. That was how they usually prayed. And when Natalie was at the Wailing Wall, um, they call it the Wailing Wall for a reason. They, they speak out loud. Uh, you remember way back in, in Samuel when Hannah is praying silently? Uh, Eli thinks she's drunk because nobody prayed silently. Uh, as you know, she's just there, you know, praying, and it, he didn't realize what she was doing. They pray out loud. And, and most people, including the early Christians, prayed while standing. Now, kneeling then shows great, extreme reverence and humility to the person that you are praying to. And so Paul, right here at the beginning of his prayer, says, we need to be humble before the Lord. We need to bow our knees before him. An extraordinary amount of reverence. Um, and he calls this one that he bows before his father. Um, a father is, <coughs> excuse me, a father in, <coughs> excuse me, we're going to have to quit early. Uh, no, we're not. We're going to quit on time. Uh, a father in, in, in the ancient Near East um, was the person who took care of the family, but also the person who ruled the family. The, if you've watched, uh, oh, brother, where art thou? The paterfamilias. Um, the paterfamilias had absolute control over his family. Uh, but he also was supposed to look out for their good. And so when Paul addresses God as Father, he not only wants us to be obedient, but he is also coming to the one who is going to do good for everyone in his family. Paul has already asserted that we have access to, to the Father through Jesus Christ. We can come to the Father because when the Father looks at his Son, we're there. We are in Christ. He doesn't see us he sees Jesus, and we can have access to the Father because of that. We can have confidence to come to God because he is amazingly good, and we must come to him in humility, serving him. Now, in verse 15, that's more than I want to cover today. All right, that's less than I wanted to cover today. And the rest of the sermon is really good. You want to stay? No. We can order pizza. <laughs> Brad, there's a phone back there. All right. Uh, I'm going to give myself the week off. Um, again. <laughs> Do you want the card back? <laughs> That's true. Not the gift certificate, just the card. <laughs> you people. 
I'm going to give myself the week off, and, and I'll preach this sermon next Sunday. Um, the rest of it. The rest of the story. This is a good Paul Harvey conclusion. Um, anyway, we can come to God. He is our Father. We have access through the Spirit. We have access through Jesus Christ. But we do have to come with You're going to give my story away. All right, wait, wait till you get to the picture. There's a picture. Wait, wait, back up. All right, I want to conclude with this because this is really good. Okay. What? I don't know. It hurts to laugh. I want to conclude with this. God is able to do more than we could ever ask or imagine. This is Gabriel Hurls. He's a six-year-old. You can't see him. He's got a cake here in the shape of a Humvee, and it's desert camouflage. And it's his sixth birthday. And Gabriel, uh, like any six-year-old, was looking forward to a party and a cake and balloons and his friends. And, and I don't think he wanted a clown, no. Uh, and, and all of this. And, and, and Gabriel was just having a great time. And... and you know, he's, he's, you know, probably had a list of things that he wanted for his birthday, and his mom and dad were going to get him, you know, a bicycle or a skateboard or an Xbox or, or um, what else do six-year-olds want? Uh, Legos or, um, you know, all kinds of things. He's, he's probably had a list, and he probably gave it to his mom and said, here, mom, bring this for me. So while they were having the party, uh, he doesn't notice that there is this big old honking box over in the corner. I mean, it was a big box. And, <coughs> and finally, one of his friends says, Gabriel, there's a big old box over here. Why don't, let's forget the cake. Let's open the present. And, <coughs> excuse me. And, 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 um, and Gabriel going, oh, oh Okay. Let's go. And so they all rush over to the corner and, and they start ripping paper off the box. I don't know if you can see this, but he rips the paper off his box and his dad, Army Sergeant Casey Hurls, was inside. And you can see, Kate, well, his face is right there. Uh, his dad had just gotten back from Afghanistan and he hadn't seen his son yet. And he decided that he would do this present thing and he crawled in this box and and Gabriel opens it up, and there's his dad. God is able to give you more than you would ever ask or imagine. Let's pray. Father, it is just amazing what you can do for us. It is amazing that you can do more than we could ever dream of because you are our Heavenly Father. You have all the power. You have all the goodness. You have all the love. And Lord, we just humbly come before you. We ask things, but you're going to give us better things. We ask for, for help in relationships, and you, and you do more than we'd ever think or imagine. And Lord, we pray that you would continue to just surprise us with your love and goodness. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, let's sing that last hymn, and we'll get out of here in time. No clapping. <laughs> what is the last hymn? 409. Let's stand as we sing.
Father, by your mercy and by your grace, we are on your side. You're not on our side. We are on yours. And Lord, we pray, because of your mercy and grace, that we would remain there at your side. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks, folks. Thanks for coming.